thirty. Fighting against me. I know. Yeah. So
exact tag is the number in that bit. And I think it's, yeah. Attention really quick. We're going to get started because of YouTube Live. Um, we want you to eat your salad. We know it might be rude. You might think it's rude, but we really do want you to eat your salad. So by the time we get through this first portion, you'll be ready to eat um, for our little intermission before we um, go on. So while we're doing the student awards and during Chef's introduction, please go ahead and eat your salad, pass the rolls the butter for the rolls, sorry, whatever you need to do, okay? Good evening, good evening. I'm Chef Dick, I'm a senior studying theater engineering. Welcome all of you to our School of Engineering Education Outstanding Alumni Awards. It's a pleasure to see all of you here, uh, faculty, staff members, students, and of course our special honorees and families and guests. I was asked to provide the welcome tonight and share a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Palo Alto, California in the San Francisco Bay Area. I came to Purdue to study engineering and stumbled my way into the multidisciplinary engineering program and the theater engineering concentration. Uh, and I'm about to graduate. Thank you. Thank you. For our visitors new to the School of Engineering Education, our school was formed 18 years ago by merging the Division of Interdisciplinary Engineering and the Department of Freshman Engineering along with the newly created PhD program in engineering education. The Department of Freshman Engineering was created in 1954. IDE has offered non-traditional and even self-designed plans of study since 1969, when Professor Dick Grace took on the role of founding head of the program. We were fortunate to have Dr. Grace with us as we celebrated our 50th anniversary in September of 2019. Between the IDES and MDE programs, we have around 110 students currently enrolled. Students attending Purdue now do so with the explicit intent of pursuing a multidisciplinary engineering degree. We have become a destination of first choice. The doctoral program in engineering education is the world's first and largest. It has graduated over 100 PhDs, currently has over 60 students, and are currently reviewing applications for our fall cohort. The outstanding alumnus we recognize today will join a select group of distinguished graduates. Dr. Umesh Patel, you serve as a role model for myself and my peers uh, as a shining example uh, of what an alumni can do and for all of our alumni uh, and the vast and esteemed Purdue community. On behalf of the Purdue community, I'm extremely honored that we can celebrate you tonight. But, but first, we would like to begin our evening with our Student Awards of Excellence led by Professor P, followed by dinner. When it looks like everybody is starting on their dessert, uh, Dr. Riley will begin the Outstanding Alumni Award recognition portion of the ceremony. Now let me introduce Dr. Mary Pilot, Director of Undergraduate Programs, IDES, MDE for our school, and a uh, mentor of mine and someone I look up to very much. Professor P, it's all yours. Thank you. 
That voice is hard to beat. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have the radio voice of Sheps, but I'll, uh, I'll try and live up to that standard because that was fantastic. Hello, everyone. So great to have you all here. More importantly for me, so great to see everyone's face. Right? It's so good to see everyone's face and to see you smile back so I know you hear me. It's, it's wonderful. Thank you for being here. Um, before we begin, I'd like to take a quick second and acknowledge several students and staff associated with the event um, and tonight's festivities. We want to first acknowledge the leadership team of our student organization that we refer to as MDES. MDES uh, is the Multidisciplinary Student Society. They build community for all of our students in the program, and they've managed to keep this organization running through the pandemic, and that's not an easy thing. Many clubs have fallen by the wayside, I'm afraid. The club was formed in the 80s, and only in the last five years was the club revived and rejuvenated. And so MDES leadership team, would you please stand and be recognized at your seat? Claudia Johnson, Logan Noster, Rachel Gander, Lynn Kim, who I believe is not yet here, and Spencer Hutchins. Please stand and be recognized. <laughs> and most sincerely, we thank all of you for your leadership and investing your time and your talent during a time when it was actually just difficult to make it to class and to get your work done. So thank you so much for that. We'd also like to thank our staff who made this beautiful event possible. I looked around. I haven't been at a fine dining event in some time, and this was really pretty awesome. Our very own MDE administrative right arm and left arm, Ms. Sandra Johnson, who is assisting us tonight and was greeted you at registration. And then also Ms. Teresa Walker, who's our Director of Communications. So for all of you, you know that these events don't, don't just happen automagically, as I like to say. It takes lots of planning, and especially on a snow night, it gets a little dicey. So we really appreciate their effort, so thank you so much. So we're going to begin with our awards that focus on academic achievement. And I encourage you to keep reminding me if I need to raise my voice a little bit. I'm used to a microphone that actually projects, so help me if I need to raise my voice. The first award is for our IDES and MDE Outstanding Sophomore Academic Achievement. And the sophomore recogni recognition only began last year. Um, so we've added this to our, to our suite of, of celebr celebratory events. We'd like to introduce Ms. Saya Ueki who is our second ever awardee. Saya is a sophomore in multidisciplinary engineering with a concentration in visual design engineering. She hails from Avon, Indiana, which is very close to Indianapolis. She's working towards a minor in product life cycle management and a certificate in collaborative lead leadership. Saya, will you please come forward and be recognized? Please, uh, let's give her a round of applause. If she comes up. Outstanding. Yes, give her another round of applause. Yes. Um, our next award is for our Outstanding Junior Academic Achievement Awardees. Our first junior awardee is Ms. Ms. Rachel Gander. Rachel hails from Loves Park, Illinois, and she's a junior in multidisciplinary engineering with a concentration in engineering management. She's also working towards two minors because if you can do one, why not do two? One in sustainable engineering and a second in organizational leadership. Our second junior awardee is Mr. Mason Zhao, and Mason is from Beijing. He's a junior in interdisciplinary engineering studies with a concentration in engineering science studies. And like the prior awardee, he feels like one degree is not enough, so he's earning a second bachelor's degree in computer science with a math mathematics minor. Mason is with us online, so he's not joining us in person, but he's here with us in spirit. And so, Rachel, please come forward. 
and let's congratulate Rachel and Mason for your outstanding junior academic achievement. Rachel makes me look like a shrimp, but you know, I have a big personality, so I can make up for it. Okay. Our next awardees are for outstanding senior academic achievement. And first, I'll introduce Ms. Ashley Grooms. Ashley hails from beautiful Floyd's Knobs, Indiana. Anybody know where that is? Yes, it's a beautiful area. Childhood home of PGA golfer Fuzzy Zeller, just in case you wondered. And uh, she's going to be graduating with a multidisciplinary degree in acoustical engineering, again, with a minor in mathematics. While at Purdue, Ashley has been very involved in the Women in Engineering program the Acoustical Society of America, and the St. Thomas Aquinas Music Ministry. Amidst the pandemic, she secured an acoustical consulting internship with Wave Engineering, and she looks forward to doing more acoustical consulting in the future in her full-time role. Ashley, please come forward, and let's recognize Ashley for MDE's Outstanding Senior Academic Achievement Award. And we have lots of outstanding seniors. We have lots of outstanding students. Can we just acknowledge that? Let's not, let's just, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do lots of clapping tonight. Um, our next awardee is Mr. Logan Noster. Logan is a senior in multidisciplinary engineering with a concentration in visual design engineering. He's also wrapping up a minor in product life cycle management. Logan hails from the Indianapolis area he received this award as a junior as well, so he's, he's done amazing. He does many amazing things. He's active in MDES as their professional development officer and has been active in a wide range of service work, including the Black Mountain Home for Children, Youth, and Families, the Faith Presbyterian Poverty Outreach, and also supporting our furry friends through Love on a Leash and the Golden Retriever Rescue and Community Education for those of us who are pet lovers. Logan works with the Lunabotics Group at Purdue and has been busy developing a drivetrain for an autonomous lunar rover headed to the moon. When he graduates, Logan's going to head to sunny Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania <laughs> to work as a mechanical engineer for the Naval Nuclear Lab. Please, Logan, come forward and let's give Logan a warm round of applause for his academic achievement. And I'm sure Pittsburgh really will be sunny when you're there. I'm sure of that. Yes. Last but not least on the Academic Achievement Awards is Ms. Chloe Otis. Chloe's a senior in multidisciplinary engineering with a concentration in visual design engineering, and she too is earning a minor in product life cycle management. Chloe's originally from Lowell, Indiana, but now calls Zionsville home, and I double checked on that. Everybody's happy in Zionsville. Like Logan, Chloe has received this academic award for the second year as well. Amazing achievement. Not easy to do here at Purdue, and certainly not in engineering. Chloe also is a published co-author on an engineering education scholarly work. And as an engineering education PhD, I couldn't be more proud of you, Chloe. That work is entitled Comparing Well-Being Indicators, Perception of Stress, Competition and Achievement Between Undergraduate Engineering, Other STEM and Non-STEM Majors. And she wrote that article with Dr. Sanchez Pena, who has been associated and affiliated with our PhD program and is now faculty at the University of Buffalo. No small achievement for an undergraduate a student. Chloe was active in Delta Zeta sorority, has had multiple internships with General Motors, working as a design engineer, and herself, her mom, her dad, her whole family are very proud that she's going to fill a permanent role there as a design engineer with General Motors in Warren, Michigan. So Chloe, please come forward and let's give a round of applause congratulating Chloe.
Okay. Next, we're going to present our IDES and MDE service awards. It makes me super proud to say that there's not just one award for service. So Ms. Peckney always tells me I'm not allowed to cry at these events, but I do have my tissues here just in case. But if I pause, just give me a break. I'll breathe through it. It will be okay. Okay. Um, Ms. Claudia Johnson and Mr. Shep Dick are our awardees for service this year. As a junior in IDES, Claudia could have taken a step back and eased out of Purdue. But when the MDES student organization was at risk of coming apart due to COVID, Claudia came forward and stood tall. Her enthusiasm for IDES and MDE has always shown brightly from the beginning of her time with our community. I remember shortly after her visit with Ms. Peckney, she came bouncing because Claudia bounces. She doesn't walk or stroll, she bounces. And she came bouncing into my office and after a long conversation, she said, I just want everyone to know about the IDE and the MDE program. I want everyone to know about it. And she's lived those words by building community in the MDES uh, uh, club. And so we're grateful to her for that. The story is similar with Shep. Don't look at me, Shep. There will be no, okay, no looking at me. He's a senior in the newly formed theater engineering concentration in MDE. And one of the hallmarks of the theater engineering concentration is a competition, really, for limited applications into the program. We only allow four admissions a year. Shep could have hunkered down. He could have taken that competitive posture and driven it all the way through school. Instead, in typical Shep fashion, he sprang forth and he formed this amazing network of students. And now he coaches, oh my gosh, I'm crying. Shep, look what you've turned me into. He's created this network of amazing theater students. They foster incoming first year engineering students coach them through their profiles and through the development of portfolios so that they too can become admitted or at least have the best package possible. It's amazing. He did that all on his own. I remember him contacting Ms. Peckney and he never wavers. Ms. Peckney will email him a thousand times and say, Shep, I have this student who's coming in from high school X, would you talk to them? And Shep always says yes. He's our go-to. And even tonight, when Ms. Walker asked Shep to come forward and present, Shep said yes. Shep said yes, just like Claudia. And so to Claudia and Shep, since I'm crying, I might as well pull out the tissue. Let's get it over with. For your service, for your commitment, for your selfless investment in your community, we're gonna celebrate the heck out of you tonight, okay? Please come forward so that we can recognize you. And if everyone would please give them a round of applause for their service. If we're bad at award ceremony, graduation is going to be a flood. That's all I'm going to say, right? We're going to have to really maybe become medicated or something at that point. <laughs> it's not good. Okay, but there's more, and, and let's move on. No more, no more crying now. We have the distinct honor to acknowledge our two Donald A. Lauren Scholarship awardees. The Donald A. Lauren Scholarship was established in 2016 by Jeffrey Lauren and Wendy Lauren in honor and in memory of their father, Donald Lauren, who was a mechanical engineer who graduated in 1948. How amazing it was that we had a mechanical engineering alumni come forward and sponsor the multidisciplinary program. And I think that's a testimony to the fact that people believe in what we're doing in multidisciplinary engineering. 
This scholarship supports IDES and MDE students who have demonstrated superior leadership during their time. And they submit an essay to talk about their leadership. This year's Lauren Scholars are senior Ashley Grooms, acoustical engineer, and it's for her leadership involving the St. Tom's Christmas Ensemble. In that essay that she shared with us, she talked about how the whole experience had humbled her as a leader and that it helped her to see the benefits of becoming more well-rounded and opening herself up to a longer-term career prospect that was something that she hadn't thought about in terms of leadership. And so it's these sorts of experiences that are not only important for Ashley, but for all of our students. And it was, it was quite a competition to select from the best of the best. We also want to recognize Junior Ryan Zahani. Where's Ryan? Where is he? What there? Oh, trouble. Trouble back at that table. OK, I tell you. Ryan's essay, well, first of all, Ryan's engineering management student. And for his innovative leadership and teamwork, um, he talked about developing a music sharing app in his entrepreneurship class. And he talked about how he was able to refine his listening skills to team members who thought quite differently than himself. He also said he learned something really, really important. And that is, if you want to make an impact on the world, you better make something people like. I think those are words to live by, right? Words to live by. So let's show our support for our Lauren Scholars this year, Ashley and Ryan. Uh, please come forward. And as you come forward, then I'll share kind of how we're going to celebrate you. So will you come forward, Ryan and Ashley, just for a moment? So this is Mr. Lauren, and he hails in the homeroom that we have here at Purdue that we call The Nest. And so Ashley and Ryan's names are permanently inscribed on this plaque that will be in The Nest. So we will never forget you, ever, now. And for some of you, other students will be looking at your names forever. So, you know, be a good, be a good influence on them hereafter. Okay. So, thanks again. Please give them another round of applause. <laughs> Bring it in. Bring it in. Okay. It's so nice to celebrate students. Um, it's finally time for our IDE 301 Golden Globe Award, or it's also known as the Logan Noster Award as of today, because he said he was the first one who got it, and so it's his award. Um, and so, yeah, back at you. Um, so if you look in your program, there's a little brief write-up on the Golden Globe Award. You might want to take a look at that. This award is, is a surprise award. Um, I created it a few years back in our sophomore professional development class as part of a complex global design and manufacturing case study. And you can't apply to win the Golden Globe Award. You have to earn it. And you earn it by thinking deeper and learning more about what it means to engineer in remote global locations, working under the re regulations of World Bank Sustainable Development Framework. And if you've never heard of it, welcome to my class, right? Because my students hadn't heard of it either. And so this award is sprung on students um, in the classroom setting after their work is turned in and they're acknowledged for the great quality work that they've done. The teachable moment in springing an award like that on students right in the classroom is simple. As people and as engineers, we should always strive to do our best work always because you never know when it will matter to someone else in a really important way, when it will benefit them in a very impactful way, or when it might even benefit you. And so this year's recipients are Aliyah Ahmad. She's an MDE student with a concentration in visual design engineering 
and Ms. Elizabeth Cassetti, who now is in the, uh, the uh, mechanical engineering program, and she was unable to join us today. But we want to celebrate Aaliyah, so Aaliyah, if you could please come forward so we can celebrate you more formally than we did in the classroom. We can give Aaliyah another round of applause. So I think you can see we have amazing students. Uh, we are at Purdue. We have lots of amazing students here at Purdue. To conclude my part of the program, um, we, we know that these successes happen not only because of the individual effort of the students, but because of the amazing staff faculty, mentors that exist around them. And at MDE, we have a spectacular academic advisor. Her name is Ms. Christine Peckney. She won't stand even if I glare at her. Okay, so you'll have to find her. It's like, where's Waldo? You'll have to find her. Oh, there she is. Okay, she's going to wave her. We're grateful to Ms. Peckney. Um, she is the heartbeat. She's the caretaker. Sometimes she's the taskmaster of all of us. She makes sure we get stuff done so that our students make, through, make it through their academic journey successfully um, and succeeding well. And so we want to take a moment to thank Ms. Peckney for her steadfast approach at making sure we're all successful in the MDE and IDE program. Yeah, well, she hasn't figured out how to make me not cry at awards ceremonies, so she's failing in that, but in all other ways. In all other ways. Okay, with that, I believe dinner will be served, yes. right? And then we will start a video right before the um, second part of the program starts. Right before the second part of the program starts. Okay. So please enjoy your dinner, and we'll see you in a moment. I was using engineering as a pre-med major, so <laughs> I said, okay, I want to be a physician, and so... But I always loved engineering. I think part of it's, you know, back in the day, the $6 million man, you know, bionics and those types of things. Okay, that sounds interesting. Let me think about that. But I was really thinking about becoming a physician. I said, maybe use engineering as a pre-med major. If I don't become a physician, okay, I got a backup. <laughs> engineering as a backup. So that's how I started and said, in my engineering career and started at Purdue with that in mind. Got to the point somewhere in my... Uh, college career where I thought, you know, it's going to take a long time to become a physician. Do I really want to put the effort in? This engineering thing is pretty interesting, so let me just stick with engineering. So I guess with my career path, I probably started in my senior year in interdisciplinary engineering. And interdisciplinary engineering was a, a good area for me because of the variety of courses I was able to take. So I was able to take a lot of biology, uh, some chemistry courses, able to sample courses through other engineering schools, uh, which was good. It was a good interdisciplinary education, learned to communicate with a variety of different people. How do you communicate with a biologist? It's the same way as you communicate with an engineer. So I learned a lot of those skills through that. And in my senior year, uh, I took a course in biomedical engineering in the Hill and Van Biomedical Engineering Center and also did a student project there. And that probably set my career. I got connected with Dr. Leslie Geddes. Dr. Geddes was the head of the Hilton Brand Biomedical Engineering Center. Fantastic uh, mentor. And the more I reflect on that, the things that I learned from Dr. Geddes over my career, is like, oh, yeah, Dr. Geddes taught me that. So it was really nice to get that interaction. I then pursued a master's in electrical engineering, but really concentrated in the biomedical engineering area, working on, a, on projects there in the, in the center, the biomedical engineering center. Uh, after I graduated, I stayed on full time as a research assistant, which then allowed me to get into other projects, not just one. So I was probably involved in four or five different projects, uh, everything from looking at pressure distributions on hospital beds, to uh, looking at computer modeling, hyperthermia treatment, to even creating a uh, telehealth system, you know, a computer system that would call patients up at home, see how they're doing, collect data, 
So working on those things. And the, one of the last projects I got involved in was uh, related to the SIS technology. And that's an invention that came out of uh, the Biomedical Engineering Center there. Interesting story about it. Um, so just briefly, SIS stands for small intestinal submucosa. Basically the inner lining of the small intestine and we harvest that from pig intestines and we purify it down there. The, the invention really started with a faculty session with Dr. Geddes. Dr. Geddes was saying, hey, you know, we need to come up with a new vascular graft. And he says, you know, why don't we use the intestine? And everyone's going, what are you talking about, intestine? Said, well, look, vascular grafts are tubular and intestines tubular. And when there's bleeding in the intestine, it's hard to control. So there must be some anti-clotting properties of that material. And I said, oh, okay. So one of the junior faculty at the time took that on as a project. And so I did a study and they tried the entire you know, intestine and in an animal model, it failed within hours. And it, I thought, oh, what happened here? But being the good investigators they were, they took a look at that and then they say, hey, there's this inner layer that's pretty strong. So let's try that. So the next time they took the intestine, they scraped it off, put in a little bit of antibiotic solution and planted that. And the animal survived. And I go, oh, okay. And then when they got to the point of explanting the tissue, it turned into vascular graft-like tissue, which was pretty amazing. The fortunate thing on the project, one of the grad students there, um, his father was a patent attorney. And so there's a discussion about that. And they say, hey, you can patent that. So the grad student brings that to Dr. Gaze. Hey, we can patent this. And that was really the start of the SIS technology. That was the first application. But then they found other applications in orthopedics and soft tissue repair. And I was just fortunate enough to be in the Biomedical Engineering Center when this work was happening. Got involved in some of those projects. And um, one thing led to another. I finished my PhD in industrial engineering. In fact, Dr. Geddes was the one who recommended me, hey, you need to go get a PhD, go over there and, and get that. And so I got my PhD, finished that. Uh, Cook took a license on the SIS technology from Purdue and started Cook Biotech. So it's been an interesting ride uh, from there. And then I've been at Cook Biotech for 26 years now. I was a second employee, fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. And working for a company like Cook, who had a long-term vision of things and understood it's going to take a while to get this into patients. And lo and behold, we've got into patients. Uh, products are distributed across the world, uh, applications from head to toe. And it's really good to hear the stories of the patients that have been treated with the material and how their lives have been improved.
Good evening. Let me try that again. I, I'm just going to do that again, do over. Good evening. Ah, uh, much better. Thank you. So my name is Dr. Donna Riley, and I am the Kamyar Higigi Head of the School of Engineering Education here at Purdue. Welcome to you all. It is so great to see everybody here tonight. Thank you for coming out on what was a pretty iffy uh, drive or walk in. <laughs> I hope everybody got here without any slips. Um, so um, I want to add my own congratulations to our outstanding students who were recognized here tonight. I am proud of each of you, and I know that we don't always, you might see me passing in the hall on your way to the nest, but I do know you and I think of you, and I think it's, a, it's hard to um, always convey that, especially in a pandemic, right, because we're not always, um, I don't, normally I try to make a presence in the nest, right, but it's been a little tough uh, with COVID. So know that I think of you <laughs> and I am proud of you as your school head. Um, and I look forward to hearing more about all of your successes as you pursue your own career paths. And I know some of you are on the brink of crossing into alum land. And so um, I wish you all the best in those endeavors. And I'm positive that Umesh's story has been an inspiration to all of you that are students here. And I hope that you've had an opportunity to make a connection with him. And if not, the night is still young. <laughs> so Dr. Pilot and I have the great privilege of presenting our outstanding alumni award to an alumnus who has achieved singular accomplishments in his field and who is a role model for our students and whose achievements have set an example for all of the alumni of the School of Engineering Education. And we are elated to have one such individual with us tonight. Umesh Patel earned his IDE BSE in Genetic Engineering in 1986. He continued his education at Purdue with a master's degree in electrical engineering and then finished with a PhD in industrial engineering. As a student and postdoc, Umesh conducted research at Purdue University's Biomedical Engineering Center in the areas of cardiac output, impedance cardiography, hyperthermia, telemedicine, and ECM materials. And to our current students in the room, this was before biomedical engineering had their own school at Purdue. It was interdisciplinary engineering students like Umesh and also Jennifer Kerr, who is also another of our outstanding engineering alums. And there were many more students in that time frame who wanted to pursue a career in this emerging field of biomedical engineering. And so, like many of you, they walked what can be a lonely road as a pioneer, envisioning and moving toward what they saw could be with the help of faculty and staff mentors along the way. And so I mentioned Jennifer Kerr. She's president of Cook Medical, and she was our awardee in 2020. Um, something about the pandemic and biomedical, I think it's, it's the time has come to recognize biomedical achievement. And bolstered by our interdisciplinary degree program and the growing number of students who have pursued concentrations in genetics and biogenetics and what would eventually become BME here at Purdue, um, biomedical engineering is one of the largest and most sought after engineering degrees here through the Weldon School of Biomedical Engineering. And so in multidisciplinary engineering, we think of ourselves as the incubator of the next big engineering discipline. And it makes us very proud to have played a historic role in that. And as we learned from his video interview, Umesh's career pathway started to unfold in his senior year, and it has remained steadfast. And as I listened to his interview, I recognized how that IDE legacy of mentorship really resonates through the years, and just how important mentors are for all of our students. Umesh worked under three world-renowned professors, Dr. Geddes, Dr. Salvendi, who actually had an important role in my career early on, and Dr. Compton, each guiding him, inspiring him, and pushing him. And every IDE alum has a similar story. Every IDE alum can name a mentor who helped direct them in their unique pathway. Umesh reflected on being at the right place 
at the right time. But his colleagues and family know that there's more to that story. And I think I will add the Louis Pasteur quote that in the world of observation, chance favors only the prepared mind. So you think about his preparation across interdisciplinary foundations and then two different engineering disciplinary foundations. Purdue and his mentors were here at the right time and helped to open the doors to opportunities for Umesh to fulfill his passion and his interests and what he was destined to do, which is to help improve health for countless others by using his engineering education to solve problems. So what began as a simple laboratory what if in the video, exploring common material properties and meeting engineering design criteria, emerged into a novel patent, creation of a company, <laughs> and globally has fundamentally changed the way that the medical industry thinks about helping people heal and regain lives and livelihoods in the process. And so now Umesh leads a team of problem solvers with global impact as president of Cook Biotech. He was one of the first two employees hired to start Cook Biotech, and we are fortunate to have his colleagues with him tonight, including Michael Hiles. I think that with the video reaction, most of you saw that, but if you were in the back of the room, Michael's here with us as well. He's employee number one. <laughs> and together they lead the organization on a global scale today. And we can't imagine the stories that you two must have, so uh, <laughs> should have asked you. I had, I had all dinner to ask, but. Lastly, as you might have read in the program, Umesh holds more than 50 U.S. patents in the field of regenerative medicine. And again, there are stories for each of those patents that we can only imagine. And there are stories not just about the patents, but about the patients. The patients who received the care that they needed from Umesh's solutions. And we hope that maybe he can share one or, one or two of those stories in a, in a few minutes, not to put you on the spot. <laughs> I'm sure you have stories to share. And so we're truly honored to introduce Umesh as our 2021 IDE Outstanding Alumni Award recipient. And we say 2021 because due to the pandemic, we postponed the award last February. Um, and we hoped that we could provide this award in person. And so we're extra grateful that we're able to do that. And we did issue the invitation in 2021. And we began, so we did the selection process in 2021. Um, and notified Umesh in 2021. And so luckily, here we are on this snowy night where we're able to join together in celebration of his many accomplishments. So please come forward, Umesh. And so the School of Engineering Education is proud to present the Outstanding Alumni Award to Dr. Umesh Patel. Thank you. And so I invite you to share your thoughts with our guests. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Riley. Thank you, Dr. Pilot. Really appreciate it. Thank you, the Engineering edu Education Engineering School, uh, for this honor. Uh, the organizers of the event, uh, Teresa Walker in particular, thank you. And specifically, thank you for not scheduling this during a Purdue basketball game. <laughs> I'd have been torn as to if I want to come or not. So thank you for that. Really appreciate that. Also, I think it's good to recognize the talented student awardees we have. Let's give them another round of applause. And thank you all for attending in this snowy condition and coming out here, so really appreciate that. As people know me, I like to look forward. I really don't like to dwell on the past. But a time like this, an award like this, uh, gives me a chance to reflect back on my career. And as most careers, uh, there are many twists and turns. It's not just a straight arrow going this way. There are many twists and turns in a career. But as I look back, one word really comes to mind if I think about this career, fortunate. It starts off uh, having parents 
and they're here in the audience, uh, Varsha and Hersad here, who really understood the value of education. In our household, um, it was an expectation you're going to college. There was no ifs and buts about that. You are going to college, and it was important. And they invested in me and my two sisters to get our college degrees, and that was very important to them. Also, I do want to recognize the two of them. This Tuesday, they celebrated their 64th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Fortunate to have the support of my family. I need the clean exercise. up here. <laughs> uh, especially my wife, Monal. The endless support, sacrifices she's made for my career. I'm really proud of her and her career, everything she's done for higher education, truly amazing, and amazing doing that while raising three children. Truly amazing. And my mother-in-law is here, Hemlata. She also supported the education of her two children, Viral, my brother-in-law, and Monal. The one problem she had, she, she had her kids go to the University of Michigan. <laughs> uh, not Purdue, went to Michigan. I guess it's a Big Ten school, so that, that may be okay. So. Um, the support I had for my three children that are here. Prashant, David, and Anuj. Really proud of you three. And they all are Purdue grants. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunate that I came to Purdue. I was an in-state student. I grew up in Columbus, Indiana. And with the high schools there, I said, oh, I'll probably end up at Purdue. It was kind of the thing there, being in state there. Uh, I did end up Purdue, and it, it was very fortunate. We talk about the national rankings of Purdue University, number four. That's great. This is a world class university with world class professors here. And I don't think we give ourselves enough credit as a university to understand we are world class here. And I was fortunate enough to be, come to a world-class university, even though it was in Indiana. <laughs> so, and I didn't realize that going through school that I was at a world-class university. And the further away I, I, I got from my graduation, I realized, oh, wow, this is a pretty special place, pretty special place to learn. As Donna said, I got into the Hill and Brand Biomedical Engineering Center in my senior year of interdisciplinary engineering. And I think that really kind of set my career. Uh, I got to meet some fantastic mentors there, Dr. Geddes being one of them. Uh, it was an amazing collaborative space. When we talk about interdisciplinary engineering and getting different groups together, that was a wonderful place to get the biologists, the engineers, the scientists all together to do wonderful things. That center produced wonderful things there. Uh, one of the first automatic and plantable defibrillators invented at Purdue University. Pretty amazing. And the mentors that I had here at Purdue was amazing. And Donna mentioned those. Dr. Geddes, he taught me how to invent. And you do an experiment and that's, oh, okay, there, there's something there, Umesh. I said, oh, okay, great. Dr. Selvendi really taught me how to do research, how to do uh, disciplined research. And Dr. Dale Compton uh, taught me how to manage and lead. He was a senior VP at Ford and decided to leave Ford and come teach. And so we were able to get that wisdom from him. So truly amazing. And there are other faculty members there. I remember Dr. Babs. I was on several projects with him. 
uh, taught me how to write a paper. I, I remember the first draft that I had, it, it was it was horrible. <laughs> but in a smiling face, he told me, okay, this is Umish, what you really need to do, how you need to organize your paper and do that. And so we had some wonderful supportive faculty like that that helped us grow. It's fortunate that uh, Cook took a license on the patents and started Cook Biotech. Uh, really fortunate that, uh, and Cook is a very special place. Uh, Bill Cook, the founder of the organization, instilled core values for the company. Act with integrity, demand quality, be transparent, give back, treat everyone with respect, solve problems together, and continually improve. Those are the foundations of this company. And it's not just posters on the wall. This organization lives that. Treat everyone with respect. And you see that across any cook company you go to. If I go to Japan, I see the same thing. China, Europe, any cook company you go into, you see that, those fundamental values of Bill Cook in there. So fortunate to be part of that and those values aligning with what I believe in. Very, very fortunate to have my colleague Mike Hiles with me throughout that journey. Uh, outstanding researcher, probably one of the best minds in regenerative medicine we have, and uh, very fortunate to have him going on that journey as we went through and built, built the company and all the technology that we developed. And some of the things we've talked about, it's truly amazing working for a company where our mission is not to make money. Sure, we need to make money. But our mission is to serve patients and do what we can to serve patients. And the things that we've done with this technology that has been invented here at Purdue University is just truly amazing. I remember some of the early research, so one of our first products was for treating wounds. And uh, we had a podiatrist use this in Bloomington, Indiana. And a patient came to her, said the doctor I came to previously said that my foot needs to be amputated because my diabetic foot ulcer is so bad. I don't want my foot amputated. It's a reasonable request not to have a foot amputated. So the physician there knew about this technology and applied it to these wounds. The wound healed. And that person didn't have to have her foot amputated. Truly amazing. We have other stories where they're conjoined twins at the head. And so they separate the twins and the surgeon then has this big defect to cover. And what, what do they want to do? So they use the, the material that we developed, the SIS technology that's designed to, to cover the brain. Works well, it grows with the child, and that child doesn't have to have a second surgery. We have partners that are using this material for heart valves. And we've heard stories of how in, um, in certain patients, kids, where they need to repair a heart valve leaflet, they've used this technology, repaired the heart valve, and it grows with the patient. That child doesn't have to have another surgery because of that. And <coughs> the stories go on and on about uh, what this technology can do, how it improves the lives of patients, and how we serve patients. So it's truly um, remarkable. Uh, when I go home at night, I feel I've done something. I can I sleep well at night knowing that the work that we do is, is really helping patients. At Cook, I've been fortunate to have a variety of good met mentors there. Dr. Neil Fearnot, protege of Dr. Geddes, truly also one of the pioneers in biomedical engineering. The number of different projects he has been involved in is truly amazing. 
He's a great mentor, a great sounding board, and um, it's his fault that I was joined Cook Biotech. He's the one that hired me. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The previous president, Mark Blyer, also a true mentor, a wonderful gentleman, really instilled the culture of Cook Biotech about caring about its employees. Really fortunate to have him as a person to look up to. And just in general, the Cook organization has so many wonderful people to work with. It is my second family in terms of that. I've been there 26 years now, and I was telling the students earlier today that I don't feel like going from place to place. And that seems to be the trend for, uh, for individuals. I just got work with a company that really aligns with my values. I believe in the mission. And it's just a wonderful place to work. So I'll just conclude here with maybe some advice for the talented students that we have in the room. We have quite a bit of talent. They're truly amazing here. Don't be afraid to fail. Uh, there will be times when you will fail. Learn from it and move on. Challenge yourself to get out of your comfort zone. And that's really how you grow. And it's easy to stay in that groove, but you got to challenge yourself to get out of that comfort zone. If you're here at Purdue, make an effort to know your professors. There are world-class professors here that are willing to share their knowledge. Make an effort to try, try to get to know those professors. Take advantage of all the opportunities available to you at this world-class university. So many different things. There are a lot more things available now than even when I was here at Purdue. Your choice at coming to Purdue has set your path for success. So rest well, that Purdue degree is going to help you in the future. And I can tell you it's helped my three children, all Purdue grads, set them for success. And I'm so proud of them. And have fun. It's truly important to have fun, laugh a little and do those types of things. So thank you for the School of Edu Engineering Education, uh, the program MDE, formerly called IDE. Thank you for this award. It is truly an honor. Hail Purdue. Well, congratulations again to Umesh and to all those who are recognized with awards tonight. We celebrate your accomplishments and we're grateful for the honor that you bring to the School of Engineering Education and to Purdue University. And so again, we thank each of you for sharing in this evening with us. This is a really special evening for us to see everybody back again. It is really uh, heartening <laughs> to see. Um, so, so thank you for, for being here. And so this is the conclusion of the formal program tonight, but please do feel free to stay if you want to um, mill around and talk a little bit. That's fine. Do we have a, do you know if we have a hard stop? Pictures. pictures. It's on the next page. <laughs> We're doing pictures next, so you can socialize in the atrium because what we're doing is we're going to the Boilermaker Special, which is out there, uh, for photos. So. So please head out there um, and we'll be doing photos with the honorees. Yep.